Well, hey there, and welcome back to Heimler's History. Now, we've been going through Unit 7 of the AP U.S. History Curriculum, and in this video and the next, it's time to talk about the 1920s, baby. In this video, we're going to focus on innovations in technology, and in the next, we'll look at how American culture was changing during this decade. So, if you're ready to get them brain cows milked assembly line style, then let's get to it. So, first, let's focus our energies with the task we're aiming to achieve in this video, and it is this. Explain the causes and effects of the innovations in communication and technology in the United States states over time. So I reckon there's no better place to start than with our boy Henry Ford. Now, Ford made automobiles, the most recognizable of which was the mass-produced Model T. Now, cars were a big deal in and of themselves, but Ford's contribution to manufacturing technology was arguably more important, and it's here that I introduce you to the assembly line. So in 1913, Ford opened his manufacturing plant, and the way it worked was it had a large conveyor belt that slowly transported the partially built car from worker to worker. Each worker would perform the same task on each part of the car. That worker's job was to put that bolt in that hole all day, er day. Now, Ford wasn't the first guy to build automobiles, but this assembly line manufacturing was so efficient that it drove the price of the finished car so low that those who built the cars from start to finish could not compete. In this way, unskilled assembly line workers gradually replaced skilled workers in many sectors of manufacturing. Now, you might remember what I mentioned before about Frederick Taylor's principles of scientific management. Taylor basically went into factories with a stopwatch and timed every little task that workers performed and then made recommendations for how those workers could shave a second off here and shave another second off there. And this process was fundamental in creating the efficiency of the assembly line work. Now, once an affordable automobile was introduced to Americans, Ford found that there was a nearly insatiable demand for them. And this transition to automobiles was really an American phenomenon. Like, by the end of this decade, Americans owned something like 80% of all automobiles worldwide. That's a lot of Fords, Tony. And with the widespread purchasing of cars came a profound impact on American society. Society. As people's individual mobility increased, a metric buttload of them began settling outside of urban centers and suburbs, but we'll get to that more in the next unit. But even cities themselves, like Los Angeles and Houston, were remade into the image of the automobile, with roads becoming a dominant urban feature. So I've been focusing on cars and how they shape society, but these same manufacturing techniques refocused the American economy on mass-produced consumer goods as well. Not only were cars being offered to the public, but so were toasters and radios and various health and beauty products and consumer appliances. And all these manufacturers found willing customers across America, since in general, many American standard of living rose during this decade. And with the proliferation of consumer goods, the advertising industry got its big boy pants on too. And thanks to Sigmund Freud's studies on human psychology, advertisers learned how to promote their products through ads that attempted to tap into the subconscious of their customers. No longer did they encourage you to buy this toaster because it was better than the other toasters. Now they messed with Americans' brains and Said, if you don't have this toaster, can you even call yourself a woman? Okay, another very significant consequence of this flurry of new technology was the advent and spread of popular culture throughout America. And this was accomplished largely through new communication technologies like the radio and cinema. The radio was almost non-existent at the beginning of the 1920s, but by the end of the decade, many American homes had them. Corporations like Westinghouse seized the potential to reach mass audiences, and by 1923, there were just under 600 official radio broadcasters. Not only did they broadcast news programs, but they also had programs specifically for entertainment, like the Amos and Andy Show, which was a nightly serialized show made in the image of the old minstrel shows popular during the Gilded Age. Then we had the cinema, or movies, and these were spreading mass culture as well. By the end of the 1920s, almost three quarters of the American population was attending movies on a weekly basis. And one of the most significant films to be released was The Jazz Singer, which was the first movie to have synchronized sound and music, thus ending the silent film era. But it's also going to be very important for you to know that as these new media were spread spreading a form of homogenized national culture through movies and radios, it also had the effect of emphasizing regional and cultural differences as well, especially those differences in race, ethnicity, and region. For example, very few radio shows or movies depicted the black experience in America, unless it was their relationship to white Americans. So as many black Americans listened to these shows and watched these films, which were the product of a national culture, which is to say that they depict what it looked like to be an American, many of them looked at their own lives and found that they were, in fact, distinct from the version of America given to them in popular culture. For the black population, this distinction led to the Harlem Renaissance, but we'll save that for the next video. And the same was true for rural folks who saw films portraying urban life. Like, it served to show them that their way of life was, in fact, distinct. So that's what I mean when I say that the national culture being spread through the media had a way of emphasizing distinctions among different people groups. All right, thanks for watching. Check out my A review packet right here if you need help getting an A in your class and a 5 on your exam in Maine. If you need more videos, 
videos on Unit 7 topics, then this playlist right here is going to make all your dreams come true. And finally, if you want me to keep making these videos to help you, then the way that you let me know that is by subscribing. Heimler out.